Oh, yeah, got the. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Jamie Allen today. Hi, Jamie. Hello. Uh, we have to thank Jamie quite a lot because he's actually already done this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. And I failed to broadcast it properly. So sorry about that, Jamie. And thanks so much for coming back. That's okay. You get to do it twice. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, there's no excuse for me not knowing what you've been talking about now, is there? No. <laughs> so uh, I should be an expert. We'll wait and see. So Jamie is a professional photographer and you're also a drone operator and trainer. That's uh, right. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about that, Jamie, and what, what your business does. Uh, well, the, the business is uh, primarily a, a photography and uh, videography business. Uh, but uh, I also uh, I also train people on the drone legislation. If anybody wants to get their commercial uh, well license, it's not a license, but that's generally the term for it as well. Okay, and there's quite a lot of restrictions about using drones um, around about, isn't there? You have to apply for permits, and is that right? <clears throat> yeah, you have to get a, a permission from the Civil Aviation Authority to actually make money from the drones. Um, right. but anybody can buy one and just use it as a hobbyist uh, and take photographs for their own use. That's uh, that's absolutely fine. Okay. So where are you based and what kind of areas do you cover? Uh, I'm in Bishop Briggs, uh, but I cover uh, anywhere in Scotland. Uh, I think the furthest we've been so far is up to sort of Inverness Way, Loch Ness, that kind of stuff. Right, yeah, yeah. I've seen some of your videos up there of the dam, I think it was. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. So you've kindly offered to give us some tips on how to take the perfect photograph. Yep. And I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to this after we didn't make it on Wednesday. So hopefully they'll tune back in. Or if not, they can catch us on replay. Yep. Um, so just run ahead with it then. What's, what's your tip number one, Jamie? Uh, well, the tip number one, we're going to be talking about, and, and I know everybody uses their mobile phones, but I'm going to be talking about a normal um, DSLR camera that we've got here. Okay. Uh, this is my little workhorse. But there's three key things that people need to worry about um, if they want to get off the auto mode. Okay. Um, they are aperture, shutter speed, and uh, the exposure and the ISO value. <coughs> Now, what's the benefits of not using the auto, Jamie? Uh, you can just get different effects. Um, and you've got more control over how much light goes onto the sensor and how your photograph looks. So if you want to take a bit more control of your photographs and what you're going to edit afterwards, then it's worth looking at the different settings on the cameras. Right. OK. So these three key points, then aperture, exposure and shutter speed. Mm -hmm. How do they, uh, what are they each individually and how do they all affect one another? Uh, well, if you think about the camera like um, is your eye, <clears throat> okay, so the, the aperture is how wide the sensor or how wide the aperture is and depends on how much light comes right. in. So think of if, you, uh, if you're in the dark, your pupil on your eye goes really, really wide. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's like a, a very small f-stop number, they call it. Um, so the, the lower the number, the wider the aperture, which means more light will come in uh, to the sensor. Okay. Uh, and obviously the higher number, the smaller the sensor, uh, smaller the aperture, less light comes in. So you can balance that out to get different effects. Um, and the depth of field changes as well. So if you want to get a nice photograph of a portrait of you being in focus and the background all uh, out of focus and nice and blurry, uh -huh. Then you just use a very small F number, which is a, a tiny, tiny field uh, depth of field, uh, right. and it, it blurs everything behind you. Ah, okay, right. So that's good for when I'm doing lifestyle photographs in a home, for example, and we're wanting to focus on a feature and kind of blur yeah. the background. Yeah. So you can focus on a specific thing, and everything else will be blurry, and then you just uh, you balance it out to whatever you want it to look like. Right. Okay. Um, uh, exposure. Sorry. Exposure. Sorry, that was the next uh, exposure is just how much light. Uh, is physically hitting the sensor as well. So you've got to control that with the aperture and the shutter speed, uh, and you can do kind of compensation on most of the cameras as well. Uh, and people might be aware from the old 35 mil uh, reels, you've got something called ISO as well, um, which is how sensitive the film or the sensor is to light. So again, if you're um, bright sunshine, you're gonna want a you know, potentially a, a, a small aperture, fast shutter speed, and a low ISO because you don't want too much light that will overexpose and blow out the photograph. Okay. 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 So exposure is quite important. You can, if you, if you blow out, if you blow out the exposure, too much exposure, you lose all that information. So a good tip, I suppose, is to underexpose your photographs and then try and lift them 
uh, when you do the post-production in the editing suites. Okay. And shutter speed? Uh, shutter speed is, again, thinking about your eye, um, how quickly you blink. All right, so if you've got a bright sunny day and you've got a really wide aperture because you've got a sh uh, so you want a small depth of field to make something nice and uh, <clears throat> nice and in focus and blurry in the background, you want a really really fast shutter speed to stop too much light coming in. All right, so up at sort of one four thousandth of a second, something like that, uh, very very quick. So sport anything dynamic. If you want to freeze that freeze that frame, you need a high shutter speed. Uh, but if you want long exposure. Uh, like at night time or whether you're filming or well, taking photographs of water and you want to get that nice smooth marbled effect you mm -hmm. can use a long exposure uh, you can use the long exposure and it just it can go on for minutes and hours and things like that as well right okay. and it just let tons and tons of light in so it's good for it's good for uh, astrophotography uh-huh yeah i've seen a few um recently um long exposure and real estate agents using it as well just to, seems to be to get a huge amount of detail in the picture mm -hmm. Would that be right? That's that's what they're doing. Is it is it long exposure? Uh, yeah. Well, when we do our um, property photos, mm -hmm. some of the times, uh, some of the photographs that I take from those are done with long exposures, uh, especially if the room is quite dark and there's not a lot of yeah. not, not a lot of natural light coming in. You can do a long exposure, brings more light in, uh, and it actually makes the room uh, brighter. Okay. Uh, but then you have to you have to compensate then for the windows because obviously the windows would be overexposed. Right. Okay. Kind of take two, take two photographs, one for the window, one for the room, and then stitch them together in the editing software. Really? Right. Okay. Gosh, I, I always wondered why the editing process seemed to be so lengthy. Um, well, I thought it was a little bit of touching up light and things like that. There's obviously quite a lot involved in it. There is quite a lot. If you think about the shadows in your rooms, if you want to try and get rid of all the shadows, you've got to expose for each of those areas and then okay. stack the photographs up and then work out which ones uh, and then remove the shadows from certain bits right. so it's an even exposure and it looks all good across all uh, across the whole room okay brilliant <laughs> thank you very much okay so hi <laughs> Anne. Uh, <laughs> uh, the rule of thirds uh yes yeah, so this is just basically about composing uh, a good photograph um and it doesn't matter what the photograph looks when you take it you can always edit it later on but um when you're out taking photographs, even on uh, even on your mobile phone, um, if you set up grid lines, um, there's grid lines called rules of third, and I'll show you what I mean uh, if I do this. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So you should be able to see uh, a picture of the mountains. Yeah. From now. Okay, so if we wanted to make um, if we wanted to make the hotel the focus of the the film, uh, the photograph. Yeah. These are the rule of this is the rule of thirds. Okay, so everything's broken up into thirds, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. And then if we put the focus on one of those grid lines, it changes the composition completely. So if we can crop it in, and then just put. So we line it up. If you're doing um, portrait photography or things like that, if you get people's eyes on one of the lines, it kind of changes the composition slightly, uh, makes it a bit more interesting. And then you can just crop in uh, and I can move things around to get any sort of interesting information that I want. And then you can just play around with it. Okay, so it's really about the positioning of objects within the photo, isn't it? Would that be right? And yeah. The layout. yeah, that's that's the basic rule they, they talk about is the rule of thirds. If you can line up the subject um, on the lines, on the, on the crossings of the lines, and that's a, a good tip. Mm -hmm. uh, make things a bit more interesting if you've got something in the foreground and something in the background as well right just uh which can be blurred out which depends on your depth of field it just makes things a bit more interesting for people to look at yeah so i mean the natural thing is always to think that you put whatever it is you're photographing in the center isn't it yeah sometimes that works but it depends on what kind of thing you're for, uh, photographing really yeah yeah it's probably not the most professional thing to do that just naturally that's what i would probably do but I think yeah but it, i mean if you're doing headshots um for people then that works quite nicely a big scene like that um i just showed you probably needs a bit of editing just to show uh you can focus the basically your eye focuses in onto what is obviously the the focus of the uh of the picture if you use that technique okay 
Great. And what is your third tip then? Uh, the third tip was all about editing, um, really. That <laughs> that photograph I just showed you was uh, was fairly poor, to be fair. And where was that one, Jamie? Uh, the one that's up on the screen, as yep. you can see now, that's actually uh, at Luss. Uh, right. moment. Yeah, it is quite dark. It is quite dark, but this is, I just wanted to, uh, one, I wanted to show you about the rule of thirds, and two, I wanted to show you about the editing. So the... Um, Editing the photographs afterwards is is pretty key, really. But it depends on. Uh, I'll just get rid of that. It also depends on what uh, file type you use when you shoot your photographs. And again, you're you're limited to what you can do on the mobile phone. Uh, but if you've got a decent, big enough camera, okay, you should have the option <coughs> to shoot in either JPEG or RAW file formats. Uh, and all that means is JPEG is just a normal picture file, um, quite small, not a lot of information in there, but that's what you get off your phone. If you can shoot in RAW, um, you get tons more information to play with. Okay, and is that R A W? R A W, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you just get lots more information um, to play with. So, as an example, one I prepared earlier. So this photograph of Lust, like I said, was quite poor because it was uh, it's really really dark, uh, but it was shot from the drone. <coughs> uh, it was shot from the drone and in um and in raw so you can see it's quite dark but you should be able to see these sliders over here on the right hand side yeah. uh and this is uh, this is photoshop well this is lightroom actually so this is a free app that you can get uh there's loads of other free apps out there that you can use but this is the one that i've got a subscription for so this is just the one that i use okay. um, so you can see how dark that is now but you can play around with <laughs> all these sliders and because it's shot in raw it actually brings out tons and tons of information so I can lighten it up I can play with all these different sliders just move them around <coughs> I can change the colors yeah, all right okay, okay. Yes, you can actually see buildings now before yeah. it you can like do all that I mean it's quite noisy um, depending on how much you do that you can get a bit of noise a bit of grain in there which makes it look uh, well depends on what your taste is like really but even just a couple of uh, a couple of moves of the slider and you can get some uh, quite dramatic results. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, that uh, you can just go around and do that. And then all it is is just playing around with things. So there's even just, just a couple of slider moves and that's the kind of stuff you can get. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, the sky's totally changed. Yeah, the sky's totally changed. You can do some other ones. There's... Uh, <clears throat> If you get a bit more advanced with things and you get into Photoshop, proper Photoshop, uh, you can do lots of uh, lots of interesting things, changing the skies, uh, all sorts of things like that. It's, uh, it's really quite clever. And is this the free software that you're using, Jamie, or is that one that you subscribe to? <sighs> right. <laughs> Sorry, he's bugging me. Uh, no, I, uh, I subscribe to Photoshop. Uh, right. So I pay a subscription because I use. Uh, this is a good point. Right, go sit over there. Yeah, because you're a pro, so you need you need the. Best yeah, time. I subscribe to it because I use it uh, quite a lot, obviously. Um, but I pay f uh, so I pay a subscription for that every month, um, which is for the video editing as well as the pho photograph editing and various other bits and pieces. Okay. Um, but if you just Google um, free editing software, you'll come up with a, a few of the Adobe uh, programs uh, as well as well. There's tons and tons of other things. <laughs> up there as well that you can use you mentioned lightroom there is that something yep. that's free or is that part of the yeah so this is uh, the one i just showed you was was lightroom that's a very um it's not basic you can actually do quite a lot of stuff in there um uh, as just with the photograph you can't yeah you can't do comp uh, composites in lightroom you need photoshop for that but yeah you can get that as a free app okay. uh, and then just use the sliders even the very very basic stuff that's on your phone is uh, is actually quite useful okay so we'll pop that in the comments below then at the end, the Lightroom, yeah. and people can look that up if they want to. Yeah. But if you want to if you want to get a little bit more advanced about things uh, and you want to have a look at something like Photoshop, um, Photoshop proper, which is kind of like the uh, the industry standard. Mm -hmm. All right. So, again, this is uh, this is up on Loch Lomond um, from sort of late last year. But, it's, again, just a little bit of a, a drab photograph. The boats aren't really in line mm -hmm. or anything like that. Uh, and just a couple of button clicks later, uh, wow. you can change it to be a bit more dramatic. So a completely different sky. The boats, uh, the boats now line up uh -huh. a little bit better. Yeah. Um, 
So it takes a little bit of time uh, to get used to it, but you can get some fantastic results with them. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's it's quite good fun. You can do that with the videos and graphics and all sorts of stuff as well with the same packages. Uh, yeah, it's amazing what you can do now. I just had a question about the camera that you had there, Jamie. Yep. What did you say it was? Uh, 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 this is a, a Sony, one of the Sony A series. It's an A6300. Right. Okay. Uh, which is uh, it's a 24, 24 megapixel camera. Um, so megapixels just say what the resolution is like, but it's not the be all and end all about thing. You want to worry about the, the sensor size of what you've got in the camera. Right. So if somebody was starting out and they're looking for the first kind of upgrade, decent camera, mm -hmm. what would they be looking for then? What sensor size should they be trying to get? Uh, depends what they want. To, uh, what they want to get to do. This one was quite. Uh, well, quite affordable. Um, some of the full frame things, which are a bit a bit chunkier, and what people would think about a proper professional camera, that could be up to a thousand, two thousand pounds quite easily. Mm -hmm. But uh, anything above sort of eight, ten megapixels will take a, a decent enough uh, photograph if it's got a decent enough size sensor on it. Okay. You can blow that up to poster size without too much uh, too much problem. And what about lenses? Do they need to buy lenses on top of that? Uh, yeah, you can do this one. Uh, this one is one of those ones where you can take off the lenses uh, and do various things. So different right. lenses do different jobs. Um, lenses can be expensive. This is the one that I use mostly when we do our um, property photographs because mm -hmm. uh, it's got a really wide field of view. So you can get all the room in one photograph. Um, different lenses do different things um, and they're all different prices as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, markedly different. Right. Okay. Well, that's been great. Thanks very much, Jamie. Okay. Now, if, um, to thank Jamie for his time and considering he did, he has done this twice now through no fault of his own. Um, please go over to at Blue Giraffe Imaging and give him a like. Now, Jamie, you had a, a freebie, didn't you, on offer for people who've watched today or watch on replay over the next couple of days? Yeah, that's right. Um, basically, if anybody wants to come across and like the page, then brilliant. That'd be great. Um, and any of the uh, any of the new likes or anybody that likes the page at all, if they've got a, a, a photograph that they would like editing in some way, or if they'd like photoshopping into a certain <laughs> scenario, um, for example, then uh, we can uh, I can I can help them out with that kind of stuff. Uh huh. Brilliant. Uh, so I will pick. I'm not going to. I won't be able to do everybody's obviously, but uh, yeah. I'll pick a couple. Um, and edit a couple up for people, or if they just want to chat about things, then they're quite welcome to give us a phone call. That's brilliant. Okay, that sounds fantastic. Thanks very much, Jamie. I'm sure that will be well seen. Thank so you. that again is at Blue Giraffe Imaging, and I will pop it in the comments above. Just give me a few minutes once this finishes, and I'll get all the details in there on the post. But thanks for coming in, Jamie. Okay, thanks a lot. See you soon. Okay, bye. Bye.